Hi mentees, I'm Alex from Boldly. Now your mentor relationship is a fantastic safe space for you to practice some of the harder skills that you're going to need in your daily work to set you up for your future career as leaders in this business. You can use this time to role play and to test out different relationships, different ways of communicating that allow you to find middle ground with other people. This is what we call diplomacy. You might see it as being flexible to get outcomes. So an example of a time where you might need to be diplomatic. If your boss uh, says, we really need to paint this wall blue, but you've heard some customer feedback that they really prefer the color orange. You want to be able to represent that perspective, give another piece of input to your boss, but you want to do it in a way that actually gets results. This is a situation where we want to be diplomatic. You can imagine if you were too harsh and you said, boss, you're so stupid. Of course, the customer's right. We need to paint it this color that's gonna get a knee jerk reaction. You won't get the outcome that you want. Likewise, if you don't voice up, if you say nothing, that also won't get the outcome that you want. So these two extremes of too aggressive or too passive, neither of them move you forward. We're trying to role play how you find that middle ground, how you strike a balance of being assertive, but also collaborative to get the outcomes. Diplomacy is such a hard thing to develop and that's why you need to start now in your mentoring conversation. So when you come into these situations, either with your mentor or in real life, you need to first think, does everybody in this scenario have psychological safety? What that means is, do they have a voice? Do they feel like they can speak up? Is there any power dy dynamic that is limiting any of us from having a say in this outcome? Just reflect that to yourself. Ideal situation is that everybody needs to feel like they have a voice. The next thing you wanna do is work out where do we have common ground? Where do we have a common interest in the outcome to move forward? And really make sure that you anchor on those common perspectives and the things that you're both trying to achieve. You might find that you can build a better uh, way forward and maybe a better argument in your head if you start to think about the contrary views to your own perspective. So if you're thinking, well, I really believe we should paint the wall orange because that's what the customers think, but a contrary view to my perspective might be, let's paint the wall green. Why would somebody think to paint the wall green? So this is thought experiment, thinking about a contrary view to yours, helps you think through all of the arguments that might come back to you. Okay, and again, in response, how would you address those arguments to your contrary view? So it's an, I'm using the word argument, not because we're having a fight, not because we're you know, in, in any aggressive situation. A line of argument is just what's the logic that I'm following to present my data and my insights to get the outcome that we're aiming for. So I use the word data and insights because any diplomacy needs to be based on facts, needs to be based on evidence. You need to try to remove the emotion from it, okay? You can definitely say, my instinct is we need to do X, or my perspective from my experience is we need to do Y. That's fine, that's still data in a sense, okay? But wherever possible, try to use facts, try to use figures to create this diplomatic scenario. It never needs to be personal. It's not about people's character. It's really just about getting outcomes. When you can strip back some of the emotion, when you can strip back and make sure that you have really clear logic to your line of argument, this is how we're more likely to get success and to be diplomatic, to find the common ground with our bosses and our colleagues. So you need to be really conscious of watching other people. In this scenario, when you're speaking to your boss and saying, actually boss, the, the customers think this wall should be orange, you want to be constantly observing. How do they react? Do they withdraw? Are they embarrassed? Are they excited because of the way you're approaching? So just be watching some of the energy that comes through and make sure that, that you're constantly having to think on your feet to respond to that. This is exactly the kind of scenario, it's complex what I'm talking about. So this is where you wanna be able to work through with your mentor and say, hey mentor, could we just role play a situation where I might have an opposing view to my boss? It's really gonna help me for future. Let's just make up a situation or maybe it's something that I've seen before and can the two of us work through this and maybe even role play it so that I can see some alternate outcomes. It's only through this role playing and this practicing that you get that chance to think on your feet and set yourself up for the future. So when it comes to diplomacy, make sure you find common ground, try to think as creatively as you can about contrary views and what other arguments might come up opposing to you. Try to make sure that you use facts and figures and less emotion and absolutely role play diplomacy with your mentor. 
It's a big, tough competency. We're not gonna cover it all in this video, but hopefully it's stirred some thinking for you. So please go forth and try to be as diplomatic as you can. Thank you.